What's up everybody? Welcome to Hammerdown Motorsports. My name is Steve Fast. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. Here we are in the shop today. It's a beautiful sunny day. It is a little bit warm. So we opened up the door. I don't want to turn the fan on because it's going to completely kill our audio for the video. But either way, we'll get a little airflow going in here and get this place cooled down a little bit. And as you can see, it is 80 degrees in the shop. But I am definitely not complaining because I have frozen in this thing all winter. I'm just happy to be in the warm weather and I hope it stays for a long, long time. We have had a little bit of rain, but either way, we're just kind of dealing with the sunny days as they come and enjoying every minute of that. So today we do have a new mod for the Cummins and this kind of came not exactly how I wanted it to. I was doing a little bit of a visual inspection under the hood. It had been a while since I've checked things out. A lot of times when the truck does sit outside for a while, I'll pull the air filter out. Just make sure that nothing has made a nest in there or anything like that. Sometimes I have found like acorns and things that squirrels have left inside this factory air box. So always a good thing to check that from time to time. And when I was checking the clamps, I always check the clamps to make sure that they're not loose or anything like that. I found the center clamp on this air intake system from the factory has a nice bit of rust on the inside and it was snapped off. So it's a good thing I was checking this thing out because I didn't want to have that come apart and be able to suck in all kinds of dirt and garbage into my turbo. But either way, I just figured, well, not a big deal. It's just a clamp. I mean, this truck only has 14,000 miles on it and it's a 2014. So we're past our warranty period for the stuff that isn't directly related to oil components in the engine transmission and all that kind of stuff. So this piece here would not be under warranty. And as you can see here, we have one clamp that goes onto our top of our lid here. And then we've got one that goes to the tubes where they come together, which is our one that's broken over there. And then we have one more way down in there to the turbo. So now this is where the story gets interesting. And through my experiences with dealerships, I really kind of just don't hold my breath until everything is done because they always throw me curveballs, And this is definitely one of them as well. You can order the clamp that goes on the air box. You can order the clamp that goes on the turbo. You cannot order the one in the middle. You have to order the entire tube assembly. I, you might even have to order the whole intake. I didn't really get into it that far. I know because of dealer pricing and all that kind of stuff, I'm not going to pay for an entire air system just for one clamp. And the guy's like, well, you can just go to a hardware store and order yourself a clamp. Not a big deal. I said, well, yeah, I could do that, but it does have these little slots everywhere for the clocking and everything like that. And there's a piece of rubber that's on this tube itself that pokes through there. So either you're going to cut the rubber off of the tube or you're going to have to cut your new clamp. And that's just a lot of work for a clamp that's probably going to rust out in a couple of years anyway, because as you can see, this is a really cheap, junky clamp. It's not stainless or anything like that. So, I mean, I'm just really not going to buy the factory part. I don't really don't want to modify something else. I choose just to upgrade and eliminate. So that brings us to our install today. And let's show you guys how we're going to upgrade this truck. All right, here it is. We have our S and B cold air intake. Let's get this thing unboxed. And as you guys can see, we did go for the dry filter variant of this air intake. You can get an oiled one as well. My opinion on the dry filter is it can be very easily just cleaned with compressed air. You don't have to go through the cleaning and oiling process, but definitely is a personal preference thing. For my application, I think this one's going to work the best. So now that we got this all unboxed, it's time to go and take out our factory system and get ready to get this one assembled and installed. So now it's time to remove our factory air box assembly. We also have our saber light under the hood here to give some light on the situation. If you guys are interested in one of these, there will be an Amazon link in the description. So now let's get this thing removed. So first thing we're gonna do is disconnect our electrical connections on the top of our air box. The one closest to the front, you just push this tab and it releases it. The one towards the rear, there is this little red tab. Just kinda wanna push it up so it's in the unlock position. And then you're able to push down on this tab and remove it from the sensor. Next, there is a little push clip that's holding this harness into the air box. I'm using this little push pin tool, which I will have a link for as well. Kind of helps with these to get them out pretty easily. Also in other applications where they're a little hard to get at, this thing just pops them out really nicely like that. You can set that aside for now. So being that our center clamp is already broken, I'm just gonna leave this clamp in place 
And when I pull the top of the air box, I'm just gonna remove the lid. I think it, you are able to just remove this bolt and pull this entire thing up as one assembly. But I kinda wanna take the lid off itself just so it can kinda manipulate the bottom part and make sure that everything is clear and out of the way. And there is a wiring harness down here for that gate, so I wanna make sure that everything is okay with that, then I don't mess up any of the wiring. So now we're gonna remove the upper lid of this intake. I'm using an eight millimeter socket and my little quarter inch Milwaukee impact. Makes pretty quick work of these. Now I'm just gonna lift up on the air box. There are tabs towards the driver's side, so you just gonna kind of wiggle it out towards the passenger side. And as you can see, our air box came apart. You can see all the corrosion from that really cheap, junky clamp that they put on here from the factory. So we are gonna be putting this aside and probably never using this again, to be honest. And actually, I just noticed this as well. These clamps were tightened by the factory. I've never cranked on these or anything like that. This one on the end is also broken, if you can see that as well. So I'm not really too impressed with the quality of the clamps that they put on this truck from the factory. You can see all the rust and everything forming on here as well. And now after seeing all this, I'm probably not gonna be too surprised if I find rust on the one on the turbo also. So now I'm gonna remove our factory air filter, just kind of have a look at it. As you can see, it is starting to get dirty. It's not terrible. I did shine a light through this when I was doing my underhood inspection before, and you can still see lots of light coming through, so this filter is still fairly good serviceable condition, but our new air intake is definitely gonna change the game with this whole system. Now we're gonna grab our 13 millimeter socket, and we're gonna remove this front bolt for the lower section of the factory air box. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is grab a hold of this lower section of the air box. There is a rubber grommet and a plastic pin that's attached to the box that goes into it. So you're just gonna to wanna to give this a quick pull and we can get this removed. Now just pull up slowly because we do have our actuator wires still attached. We'll give you guys a view over here on the other side. As you can see, we can only pull the box up about this far because our wire gets tight. But this is just a push type connector as well push down on the back of the retaining clip, have our wire removed, slowly lift this out of the way. We can see there is actually another one of those push clips holding this harness in place. Now, instead of pulling on the wire, I'm gonna use my removal tool as well so we don't strain anything. Pop that out of place and our lower section is removed. All right, now to remove our actuator motor from our factory box, I've got my T27. This is not a tamper proof, this is just a regular one because it does not require one on these. Not sure exactly why they said it was a security bit, but either way, this is what's gonna work. So let's get this thing removed. So now that all our bolts are removed for our actuator motor, they say basically what you can do, grab a hold of the butterfly valve inside the box and grab a hold of the actuator and just twist and pull and it might take a little bit of force to get it out. But it is fairly tight. And with a little bit of wiggling and a little bit of tugging, this is your actuator motor removed from your factory air box. Now next you can use a pair of pliers or if you do have one of the factory spring clamp tools it might be a little bit easier to get at but we're gonna remove the PCV hose that goes onto the tube on the lower section over here. And we're gonna remove the clamp that goes directly onto the turbo and we can get the remainder of the factory air box removed. For me personally, I do like using the factory spring clamp removal tool. Basically what you do is the two ends go inside these little tangs and then you just squeeze this together and it will release the tension on the factory spring clamp. And then you're able to just kind of slide your spring clamp down the hose and then you're able to get the hose removed. Now to remove the clamp on the turbo, you can either use a flat blade screwdriver or a nut driver just like this, 5 16 This works actually a lot better because it doesn't slip off like the flat blades tend to do. But let's get this down in there, get that clamp removed and get the remainder of this thing out of here. Let's give it a quick twist. And wow, look at that. Our turbo one is also broken. That is awesome. So all of these clamps are pretty much rusted out on this truck. I think this one here, actually there's a fourth one that I didn't know about. So we have turbo, then we have the one on the lower section in the middle here. We have one pretty much in the middle, I guess. And then we have another one there on the lid. So these things have suffered a lot of rust. And for 14,000 miles, I mean, I don't drive this thing a whole lot in the salt or anything like that. I try really hard to keep it clean. As you can see, the engine compartment isn't perfectly clean, but it's not full of salt, dirt, or anything like that. 
And I mean, I could see this happening in like a 100,000 mile condition, but seriously, this is ridiculous. These clamps are absolute garbage. So luckily enough for me, when I was removing the turbo clamp is when it broke, it was probably hanging on by a thread, but I still ended up having a good sealing surface on that turbo for the time I was driving the truck. But I can't imagine if you had one of those break on you and you didn't know it, and you ended up driving 10, 15,000 miles down some dirty oil field roads or something like that, could end up taking out your turbo or even worse. So next up, we're gonna remove our MAF and our IAT from our old airbox, get those out of the old system. And then with our new kit, we actually get a new gasket and new hardware to install them onto our new tube. Now to remove these, I'm using my seven millimeter socket and my screwdriver style driver, and they come out just like this. Move your bolt, slight amount of pressure. Just enough to get that O-ring to come out and pull straight out, you're good to go. Same thing with the MAF, you just wanna pull straight back on, it's just an O-ring that seals this and then the two retaining bolts. And when we put it into our new tube, it's actually gonna add a gasket. So now for the IAT, I left the factory O-ring on and I installed the S&B gasket around. It fits really nicely over top. And I tried putting the sensor into the tube just without the gasket, just to kind of see how tight that O-ring and everything fits. And this thing has a really nice seal there as well. This is just an added bit of protection. Also, they do give you new hardware. This is now a stainless screw, so we're not gonna have to worry about rust in the future. All right, took it over to the wire wheel, got some of that rust off of the shaft, and now it's time to install it into our new box. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is take your screw, take the washer that has the rubber insert on it. That is gonna actually go in between your top of your screw and your actuator itself. And then you're gonna put the spacer in between the box and the actuator and then get everything nicely tightened up. Next, we're gonna take our s and swing gate and attach it to the arm. So now that we have our screws nicely tightened up on our new gate and arm assembly, we can go ahead and install our seals in our new box. And if you did have any question of which way anything goes on the air box, they do provide this very detailed color picture of an exploded view on how everything goes together. All right, when installing these seals, they are a little tricky. They are a very heavy duty silicone seal. It is a very high quality seal, but at the same time, they are a little tricky to get into place. You have to spend a little bit of time kind of manipulating them and getting pushed into the brake position. But as you can see on here, you do have an index mark on your seal and on the box as well. So you know you have your seal in the correct orientation. So now we are ready to install our swing gate onto our actuator. One thing you want to notice is on the shaft, there is a flat spot on the shaft. And on our new S and B arm, there is a flat spot here as well. And that will continue on inside this. So you wanna make sure you line up the flat part of the shaft with the flat part on this arm. And then we're gonna snap it into place. Let's give it a small tug on the top, make sure that everything is snapped in and everything looks good as far as this goes. Now we're gonna take our new hose clamps and put them on our new adapter. And as you guys can see, we have a magnet here. These are stainless clamps. So we will not have that problem with rust ever again. You can see on our fender sticks on here, not at all. So that is definitely a good sign that they're using high quality clamps that isn't gonna end up giving us the same problem that we had before. So then we're gonna take our new intake tube. We're gonna put our new adapter on here as well. I'm gonna tighten the one that goes onto the tube. And obviously we're gonna tighten this one when we put it onto the turbo. Next up, we're gonna install our reducer hose. We're not gonna be reusing the factory one because actually the intake tube that we're putting on has a larger end, so it actually reduces down to the factory size for the tube that's on the engine. So we're gonna put this onto our new tube and then we're gonna install the brand new clamp. All right, now it's time to bring over our airbox to the truck. We have our extension harness and we're gonna install that on our motor like so. Make sure that is nicely clicked in. And next we're gonna take our new tube and we're gonna place it into the new air box. Just gonna slide it in nice and slow. It isn't gonna be a perfect seal, being that your filter is actually gonna be the seal onto this tube. This is just gonna keep the dirt and everything out of the air box. There are little bumps here on the tube, so you know where to stop, and then you should have enough room to be able to get your filter into place. All right, now that I'm ready to put in the air box and tube assembly and get everything in place, there are two grommets where our factory air box sat on. One is right there. And as you can see over here, there is a chunk broken out of the battery box. Now, when I took the old one out, everything seemed to come out nice and clean. There was no issues whatsoever. And as we take our factory air box, we can see our grommet 
for that one that is broken off is sitting right there still on the air box and the other one came out where it's supposed to in the battery box on that side. So when I had this truck into the dealership for the recall for the water pump, I imagine this air box came out, well rather that one over there came out, and the guy yanked on it, broke this piece out. I'm sure he noticed it because it's not sitting on this air box anymore, and it would have just fallen down on the floor or whatever, or they threw it away and didn't want to own up to it, thinking that the owner probably would never ever know about it until I fight for about 20 minutes trying to get this thing to fit in there properly before I noticed that that was broken off. So yeah, another A plus for the dealership. So now I'm gonna have to track myself down a battery box for this truck since the person that broke this obviously didn't want to own up to it, which is pretty sad. That's something as a mechanic, I never ever had any manager get mad at me because I came to them with something that went wrong. I mean, obviously I'm sure he didn't try to break it, but things like this do happen. You just gotta own up to them. You don't just let them go because now that I found this, now it's my problem, now I'm mad and it's not really a good thing. I mean, it's better if the customer just hears, oh well, you know, something happened when we were doing your water pump. We have to buy you a battery box. They're probably, I would say under $100, something like that. I mean, their cost maybe even cheaper. So, I mean, that would have made it right for me. Unfortunately, now I've got another reason why I don't like taking things to the dealer. I've, I've had nothing but problems on the sales end all the way through the service end, and this is just another example of that. But for today, we can put our box in, even though we are missing the one mount. We still have the mount in the front and the one on this side, which is sealing this part right here and locating the box where it needs to be. So everything should work out as far as that goes. So let's get this thing in here. So once the box is sitting where it's supposed to be, you will see that the mounting hole will line up really nicely. You shouldn't have to be pushing it one way or the other. It should just line up on its own. They do give you a supplied bolt, which is also stainless. So we're not gonna have this one rust like the other one did. We're gonna tighten that down. This is a five mil Allen. Get this located into place. It also helps too if you pull this little clip that holds these coolant hoses here, just to kind of slip everything underneath. And once you're done, you need to snap it back into place and all those lines are back where they were. So now we have everything tightened down and even with that missing mount point, you can see it is still pretty tight. Everything is nicely tightened down on the turbo. You just wanna make sure that everything is aligned properly. And what I did is I kind of clocked the tube just a little bit more this way, just to give me enough clearance in between our exhaust manifold and this tube. And now we're ready to install our filter. Now installing the filter, they say install flat side up and there's an SMB logo on the top so you know which side is the flat side. And if you didn't see it on the front, it is on the back as well. Make sure that your clamp is in a place where you can actually tighten it up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put it down like so. Put the back side of your filter in first, get it onto the tube and push it on into place. So now with your clamp loose, what you're gonna wanna do is just push your filter on. It should push on fairly easily. You can feel that it's up against the ridge. And then what you're gonna do is line up your nut driver to your clamp and start applying pressure onto the clamp and tighten it down. So now that we got our clamp nice and tight and just pull on the filter slightly, make sure that everything is nice and tight onto the tube. We're not gonna have that filter fall off. Give it extra tiny little bit just to make sure everything's nice and tight. And we're ready to install the window. First thing, there's this little tag here with a part number. I'm gonna remove that, get that out of the way. And I just kind of laid it here on top of the box. So it wasn't in our way. Get a corner started, hopefully everything fits nicely. And there it is, our gasket is installed. We'll set that in place on top of the box and get our retaining screws and this thing's all done. So now lastly, I just put a zip tie over here onto our AC line to keep this harness nicely secure. And we got our IAT and our MAF all connected once again. And also we have our actuator down below connected with the extension harness. So everything is back together, ready to go. Now it's time to start it up. We got everything up to temperature. We're at 185 degrees for our coolant temp. We're at 14,479 miles. And as you can see, that rust was pretty scary, especially if you have a truck that you depend on. 
you might want to check those clamps because they are definitely poor quality and I know how much use this truck has it's baby this thing is never taken out in the salt and not washed or anything like that or any kind of abuse whatsoever I'm the only one that drives this truck and to see the amount of rust and how those clamps are broken is absolutely shocking to me but now that it's all replaced and we have our new s &B intake system let's go for a little drive and see what this thing sounds like all right first impressions see if you can hear this Definitely a whole lot more turbo noise than before. Nothing too crazy, but definitely more than the intake that it had on it before would allow you to hear. Also, you do hear a little bit more of a growl kind of at the low end, but as you're driving along, it's really kind of pretty well the same. I'm sure an exhaust system would definitely help this truck out a lot. It still has all the DPF and DEF and all those things that we absolutely hate in the diesel world. But all in all, this is the first upgrade for this truck and there will be a whole lot more to come in the future. But as for now, this mod pretty well was for necessity as you guys saw how much rust was on those clamps. That was just gonna be a catastrophic failure waiting to happen. So I definitely wanted to share it with you guys out there. And this intake was only about $320 on Amazon. I will have a link in the description for it as well. Well, there you have it, everybody. We got our issue fixed with our rusty clamps. Now we have no problems whatsoever with having anything get into our engine from that being a failure. We have our new s &B intake, which is also a bonus because now we have extra turbo noise, all that kind of stuff, which is awesome. So it's gonna be really cool to see how this thing works when we tow the trailer and pull up some of them big hills and just kind of let that turbo snort and it's gonna be pretty awesome to hear. But all in all, I'm very happy with the s &B cold air intake. If you guys want one of these, definitely check out the links in the description. If you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button and as always keep that hammer down